Here now, Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. He has advocated for the United States fully boycotting these games, which start now in just three weeks. Senator Cotton, when you look at those white cubicles, some of them were in a stadium, and you think about our athletes heading there, what goes through your mind? Well, those quarantine sites are an alarming illustration of exactly what I cautioned the Biden administration about last summer. I asked for their plan to keep our athletes safe from around the clock electronic surveillance from DNA harvesting, from outright detention and kidnapping. They never responded with a sound plan. That's why I called for a boycott of these Olympics a couple months ago, because there is no plan to keep our athletes safe. Now that coronavirus is raging across China, regardless what the Chinese Communist Party says, it adds one more risk to our athletes, Martha. Imagine if we have some athletes who don't get coronavirus, but let's say they break, perhaps inadvertently break, the extremely draconian lockdown policies of the Chinese government and are arrested. Can we really guarantee those athletes' safety? Or just look at the reports today that athletes are being advised not to take their electronic devices. They're being advised to take burner phones to China. The very fact that we have to mm -hmm. ask these questions, what kind of phone should our athletes take? What happens if they get COVID? What happens if they're out after curfew? Is why we shouldn't be putting our young men and women in this position in the first place. These games should now be delayed because of the outbreak of the Omicron variant. They should be rebid and they should be conducted somewhere else that's safe, free and democratic at a later date, just like the Tokyo Olympics were pushed back one year. Yeah, I'm not sure why the IOC isn't the body that's in charge or each country in charge of taking care of their own athletes if they get sick. Because according to these bullet points, it says that the length of isolation period will be determined by <laughs> Chinese health authorities. Um, it, it's there, There's a lot of different uh, things that come to my mind when I think about reasons why you might want to isolate one of our athletes. Yeah, Martha, I can give you a pretty good guess about why the IOC is deferring to the Chinese Communist Party. It's because it's full of stooges to the Chinese Communists. Just like the World Health Organization, where China is deep into their pockets, that's exactly in almost all likelihood what's going on at the IOC. They are terrified, both as an organization and institution and as individual members, to cross the Chinese Communists. They're terrified about what it means yeah. for their livelihood, what it means for their reputations. So let's put quickly, this is the number of deaths that China claims they've had since COVID began. 5,699. I mean, does anybody believe that? This is uh, a population 1.4 billion people. They say they've lost 5,699. Uh, we know that their vaccine doesn't work. Um, it's proven ineffective against um, the variant Omicron for sure, and potentially others before that. Um, before I let you go, I do want to ask you about this breaking news story that deals with Russia and Ukraine. The reporting is that the Biden administration says that we have information that indicates Russia has already pre-positioned a group of operatives to conduct a false flag operation in eastern Ukraine. We've seen this kind of thing happen before, um, before world wars, actually, where people are infiltrating and then they attack in order to provoke a reason for Russia to come in. What do you think? Well, Martha, I don't want to comment on classified intelligence, but I can tell you I have no reason to disagree with those reports about the intelligence. And you're right that this is exactly the kind of thing that Russia has done before in Ukraine, in the Donbas, in Crimea, in Georgia, and elsewhere. It's exactly the kind of thing you would expect from a state whose president is a former KGB spy. All right, we'll follow that story closely. Uh, Senator Cotton, it's always great to have you. Thank you very much for being here.